up everybody, I'm Chef Mikey. Welcome back to Chef's Harvest Farm. I am a former executive chef turned urban farmer and today I'm gonna show you how I built the ultimate no-till garden. I'll go over the strategies of how I built this. I, I started just growing food for myself and my wife. Basically, we wanted to eat organic vegetables and uh, I started shopping at the farmer's market and then I learned that there's this whole other level of food that you can't buy in a grocery store. So I wanted to grow my own high quality food. When I started growing food, I just uh, started with a little raised bed box garden that I filled with soil that I bought from Home Depot. And then that grew into a lot of them. I had like 25 of these little boxes that I built kind of back here at one point. Those are all gone now. It's not an efficient way to grow food trying to weed eat in between them and mow around them. It just doesn't work well. The reason I got into this style of agriculture and growing food and the way I learned about it and why I grow no-till is because I knew nothing about growing food. My mom was selling tea at a farmer's market in Scarborough, Maine, which is the town where I'm from. And I grew up there and she said, well, there's this new farmer in town and you should follow him on Instagram. And his name's Daniel Mays and he runs Frith Farm. So I followed him on Instagram and he was promoting these no-till methods of growing food. So basically they don't use a tractor or anything, or I don't use a tractor. I don't own a tiller or a tractor, but I might own a tractor soon just to use to make compost and move it. Basically, I don't want it for working in the field. Um, so anyways, this guy was promoting these no-till methods of growing food where he was using big giant tarps to tarp the ground. And that's how I killed the pasture here or the backyard, the grass. I just tarped it. The first time I put a tarp down, it was in October. And then it, it gets cold. So the heat is what really kills it. But even doing it that time of year, I just left the tarp there all winter. I'm in Knoxville, Tennessee zone seven. We have relatively mild winters typically, but it can get really cold. So when I pulled the tarp back in the middle of the winter, the grass was mostly dead with some like uh, weeds growing out. So I dug those little weeds growing out up with a fork. It was mostly onion grass and I don't know the other kind, what it's called, I'll show you. It's this stuff. This is like the worst weed that I have. I think it's called Bermuda grass maybe or something. I could be completely wrong. I don't know, but it's like that rhizomus stuff that sucks. So the silage tarps don't kill that. I mean, I had it tarped for like a year. So the whole garden, whenever I find that, I go in with a fork and I dug it out. So then I'd build the beds. I'd get like a pickup truck load full of compost and I measure out 30 inch beds 14 inch walkways and tie it up with a string from one end to the other while I measure it out and build the beds like that and then I covered them still with a silage tarp to just kill any more weeds that are going to grow up. So then that spring I peeled back the silage tarp and I moved it over to the next part of the yard and I started killing that part and all this while I had a full-time job. So I'm doing this on the weekends basically. And then the next part of the garden just stays tarped for about a year. Well, then I built those beds in the same method, but then I just cover crop the whole thing immediately to winter ryegrass in like October of that year. So then the following spring, the ryegrass is about six feet tall. I crimped it using a pallet. I just like threw a pallet on top of it that matted it down. I dragged the silage tarp back over it for about two weeks. Cause now it's like April, May starting to get hot in Tennessee. So it cooks that up pretty quickly and just leaves a flat grass mat. And then this next plot that I have the footage of that's this year after I built this market garden and I had a ton going on. I'm super busy. I'm like, well, I still have all this yard. So I just pulled the tarp over there and I just let the tarp sit there for a year. Then the grass is just completely dead. Then it was mid October. I was already planning to do this. Obviously I planned this whole thing. It's two years planning. You can't just wake up one morning and say, Hey, I'm going to use this method on this YouTube video that I saw today. Like eh, you need to plan ahead. 
So I planned two years in advance, had the tarp sitting there for a year. I pull that tarp back and it's just red clay basically. And it starts pouring rain out and I got a five gallon bucket filled with ryegrass seed. And I just go out there in a rainstorm and I just start shaking ryegrass seed. I put 40 pounds of ryegrass seed right on top of the, the soil. I just broadcasted it. Well, sure enough, the ryegrass sprouted and the ryegrass grew up this tall and I crimped it and I built beds right on top of it in the wood chips. So it's just like a flat sheet of mulch, but the roots are still in the ground feeding the microorganisms that have a symbiotic relationship with the plants that I've planted now into that garden. Then I layered the compost in 30 inch beds about six to eight inches deep right on top of that. And then I built walkways out of wood chips right on top of that. Okay, so uh, it's been pouring rain out for the last two days. I don't really know if that's good or bad to do this. Um, but my thought of doing it while it's soaking wet is because I'm going to crimp this down and then pull the silage tarps over it to kill it. Um, and then it's going to be like a mulch grown in place. The roots are still going to be attached. Um, and when I peel that tarp back, it's just going to be like um, straw everywhere, basically, like a big mat of straw. And then I'm going to plant right into that. So I'm going to go like around the edges and crimp the edges in first. And then I'm going to go and crimp it all and all facing one direction so I can just pull the tarp over it. So I'm going to go down to one end and back and then down and back. And I'll speed that up while I do it. So this is my tool, basically, right? It's hanged by a string. And I'm just going to go up and crimp it down and just keep going like that to crimp it all the way to the ground. And that's the first step.
about how this method turned out. I hope you get something from it, and I hope you enjoy learning how I built my ultimate no-till garden.